Welcome to the Audio Conferencing Center. Please enter a conference ID followed by pound. You are now joining the meeting. That's good.
started. Dr. Mosley. Artificial Intelligence Career Pathways. All right, so through completion of the locally developed Career Pathway course process, Gwinnett County Schools, along with multiple local and regional businesses, industry partners, and post-secondary institutions, collaborated to create a secondary career pathway designed to help students transition smoothly to a post-secondary credential or into an in-demand artificial intelligence career. This development team included local and regional industry partners in the fields of artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, and programming, along with post-secondary partners that worked to determine appropriate course content and technical skills for students to master and prepare for entry-level jobs or post-secondary additional training. Collectively, the three courses and technical skills covered are designed to prepare students for a credential of value in data science or programming. The courses in the pathway were approved to be posted for comment at the March board meeting and have been posted for more than 30 days. Any comments, questions? The team, the industry team has grown and has been very responsive uh, to what we were wanting to be able to do. Um, from Fulton, Paulding, Fulton, uh, Gwinnett counties, uh, industry partners have been very favorable of what's happening. We've had some constructive uh, feedback as well to help when we uh, create the instructional resources for the courses uh, to be able to move forward. But yeah, the courses uh, have been very favorably seen by uh, the people that have um, responded. Thank you. And, and this was an industry, a local need that Gwinnett came together. I still want to be able to say that Gwinnett is creating a cluster of schools K-12 that will focus on machine learning, programming, uh, coding, and everything so that uh, kindergartners uh, through eighth grade will go through various steps uh, sequentially and developmentally, and then when they're into high school, this will be ready for them to be able to go forward with. Could you turn the volume up just a little bit? I can barely hear you. You seem to have a hard time hearing when the board speaks. So if, if make sure that you're speaking into your mic. Butch, can you hear me now? Not, not real good. A little louder, please. Okay, we'll 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 speak up as much as we can. I was in high okay, school. I was in high school for 23 years. I think I can handle it. <laughs> I'll try to turn both ears on. <laughs> All right. Any other comments, questions? If not, we'll move this to the consent agenda. All right. Uh, number two, standards, Georgia standards of excellence for high school computer science, elective courses, data science one and two, introduction to Python programming, and eSports. So the State Advisory Board for Computer Science identified several areas within the discipline that would be valuable options for student exposure in high school. These are data science, esports, Python programming, and artificial intelligence. Working committees were convened to discuss the best way to engage K-12 students in the learning of the knowledge and skills needed in these areas. And while the uh, Artificial Intelligence Task Force decided to start with the CTAE pathway, the other three committees decided that a computer science elective would be the, ble the best place to start. Each task force was composed of representatives from K-12 higher education and industry who work to develop standards that would be engaging to students and expose them to skills that would serve them in a variety of post-secondary experiences. The courses in this pathway were approved to be posted for comment at the March board meeting and have been posted for more than 30 days. Yeah, this is a crazy question, but Python is... Loudly. Sure. So they can hear you. I'm just saying make sure you speak uh, loudly in the mic. I said, I know, I know this is a crazy question, but Python standards, Python is a programming product that is language. Language. a language. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to see what it looks like. <laughs> so kids buy, do you buy it? It, it is a um, software just like uh, basic oh, C++ okay. that you'd be able language. to create it's a, computer a code, language. like Java, yes, it's, not, it's gotcha. another language. Okay. 
I've got it. Thank you. A little slow here on the intake. All right, Mr. Long, did you have a comment? Not the group of the whole thing. <laughs> All right. Any other comments, questions? Just if, do we do VMware or anything like that anywhere? Um, like the security stuff? Do we have any pathways like that? VMware, not at the moment. No. Okay. But we can talk about this. Okay, sure. That's all. Is that simple? It's a different kind of language, but it's in the security world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is, they, they which is top of mind right now to everybody, right? Yes. Uh, it may be touched. <laughs> Can it get us some gasoline? <laughs> <laughs> it may be within the current cybersecurity uh, pathways um, um, think, in terms of part of the instructional resources, but okay. I cannot totally confirm that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything else? If not, we'll move to the consent agenda. Number three, standards, cosmetology, state licensure, courses. So this item is being requested to post for 30 days public review and comment. Our current high school cosmetology programs offer three courses that lay a foundation to the beginning steps of becoming a cosmetologist. Cosmetology teachers and advisory boards across the state began to discuss ways to increase lab time to help students achieve the 1,500 training hours required by the Georgia State Board of Cosmetology to take the certification exam. A draft of nine consecutive courses were revised with current protocols and expectations in today's cosmetology businesses and Georgia State Board of Cosmetology regulations. All courses are aligned to meet the expectations of achieving the 1,500 training hours required for a student to take the State Board certification exam. And the courses will serve as standalone courses that will allow room for scheduling flexibility after the initial introduction to personal care services course. Any comments or questions? I, I'm sorry I'm commenting on so much, but I have That's to okay. go back um, with John. And when these all first came out, um, Dr. Wall, John, they asked us to go with them, a couple of us, to go and talk to some people. We knew um, the guy that was head of the cosmetology. And it was so funny when we went there, he said, can y'all teach these kids how to um, uh, add and subtract? But they are so accustomed. I mean, not subtract, divide. I'm so, sorry, subtract money make changes he said they're so accustomed to using the 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 calculators that if it goes out and i thought that was so odd and but of course how much mathematics plays into this course and john you might want to just say what comment what we were talking about how far it's gone now into the yes, into high schools we've sorry thank you <laughs> we've got our three courses that uh our sequence uh, for the students to be able to complete in high school to them take um, um, occupational exam to get ready but then they can also go forward and earning uh, 250 hours of theory and 12 1250 hours of application while in high school they may be able to complete it all they may not be able to uh, complete um, for instance uh, if a student is wanting to do a certain hair type of hair style the board may say that that takes 45 minutes of time to complete or an hour to complete. The student may have 90 minutes in the class period, be it because of their efficiency in, in doing it uh, in a routine manner. They may be able to get it done in 45 minutes, but they will still be allowed that full hour of credit for completing it. And so it's just getting them to where they understand it. It's very rote, it's very um, uh, easy for them to be able to do what's requested by the customer and that. So that's where the hours are able to stack up uh, in an efficient manner. But we have uh, agreements with the post-secondary for them to be able to continue on at the technical colleges to finish up any of their hours from here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> A couple of what? It will help a lot of uh, students as they go to college, too, because a lot of them, they make supplemental income by working at a salon on, on campus or right. doing something like that. So that's helpful. Right. Great job. Any other comments or questions on the cosmetology standards to uh, approval to post? Can we post in 30 days? 30 days. Yes. Okay. All right, we'll move that to the consent agenda. And before we go to number four, I would just like, if I think most have already met our teacher of the year, Ms. Tracy Penley. She is an ex officio officially now. Super cool, thank you for having me. So we hope you'll be part of the rules committee. We'll have you as part of the rules committee because we're the cool group. I like it. Absolutely. It's in the back of the bus. <laughs> that works too. Number four. 
uh, standards film production career pathway courses approval to post. Yes, this item is also being requested to post for 30 days public review and comment. The Georgia Film Academy, numerous industry members representing film producers, directors, grips, sound and distributors marketing, along with film teachers from Gwinnett, Fulton, and Clayton counties, collaborated to create a secondary career pathway designed to introduce students to the many critical support and necessary film production departments needed to create a film in Georgia and assist students to transition smoothly to a post-secondary educational pathway or into an in-demand career in the Georgia film industry. The essence of this career pathway grew out of an interest in creating courses necessary for all film production departments associated with the film. This career pathway is designed to give all students the opportunity to complete the audio and video technology and film, introduction to film production, and film production applications courses. Committee members guided the standards writing process to include well-rounded film production standards covering industry-specific skills, safety, chain of command requirements, as well as comprehensive insight into the entire film production process, allowing students to be prepared to work on a film production set or attend Georgia Film Academy or another post-secondary institution for additional training. And I got another question. The schools that are utilizing these, are they, do we have some in, in South Georgia, even though the industry is predominantly up in this area? Yes, ma'am. We have uh, teachers that are certified across the state in uh, audio, video, technology, film. Uh, for this pathway, we had partners from Fulton County, Gwinnett County, and Clayton County schools that participated, but then we also had industry partners from around the state uh, where film is done across the state uh, being um, shown forward. Uh, one of our partners, uh, Gabrielle Pickle, could not tell us where she was on most of the days we met because she was on, on site or on set, but she couldn't tell us where. So uh, because of the non-disclosure agreements that they have there. Um, while I have the moment, I'd like to introduce Dr. Uh, Mr. Jeff Stepakoff. He is the uh, president and executive director of the Georgia Film Academy. And I, I don't want to steal his thunder, but he has at least 30 years of experience from Hollywood, as do many of the partners from Georgia Film Academy, uh, and bringing industry into this. So Mr. Stepakoff, are you there, please? Well, thank you. I am here. Can you all, uh, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, we can. Yes. can hear you. OK. Well, I, I, can, uh, I can hear you in the distance. Um, I can't quite see you, but um, I know many of you, and it's just delightful to hear your voices in my ears here today. Um, I bring you greetings from the Georgia Film Academy. And just briefly, I want to thank you for this incredible partnership that we have had over the last year. I mean, really, that we've had over the last five, six years that the Film Academy has been around. Regarding this particular program, really over the last year, from October to April, the Film Academy has worked with the DOE and with our friends in industry to make sure that the new standards that we have for film and television production are consistent in our high schools, in our technical colleges, in our universities, and lead to a direct pathway right into the industry. Just think for a moment about how remarkable this is for our state, where we have everyone in our state, from high schools to colleges to universities, and the industry that works here, all going in the same direction to make sure that our students at all levels are prepared for the jobs that we really need here in Georgia today and the workforce that is driving the business of the state for the future. I think this is a point of pride, I mean, really for everybody in our state. It speaks to the kind of partnership that I think makes our state special, and it speaks to how we build a workforce to encourage and incentivize industry and really to frame a new business for the future. So this pipeline, the vertical and horizontal pieces of it, is something that we've been working on at the Film Academy with our friends at DOE for many years now. And I think this is an example of the, uh, the success that we, uh, we see in the partnership. And again, the new standards that we're talking about, these align directly with industry. Indeed, they've been created by industry. So I'll stop there. I just want to you know, again, share with you all what we've been doing together and really thank you for your, your partnership and the shared vision that we have as we build a future workforce for our great state. Thanks for uh, having me uh, join y'all today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, sir.
Just a quick question, John. I know, just, I mean, kind of piggyback on Ms. Rice's question. I mean, uh, I know I've seen some things down in Tiff County, Fitzgerald, a lot of filming has been going on within the past year, so I didn't know if, were there any schools down there that have been pursuing this as a pathway or, I mean, just, just because of the uptick of what I've, I've seen, uh, quite, quite a bit of filming in, in those two locations. Absolutely, sir. Um, hopefully the, the systems have um, partners um, already and within their stakeholders for Perkins 5 in terms of being able to see where they need to be, be able to bring in new uh, pathways to meet that local industry need. But then also I hope that they have uh, pr some programs in place. I'm thinking and hoping because of the size and uh, breadth of Tiff County High School that they may already have uh, audio video within their high school and be able to then make sure that they allow the teacher to come into uh, summer training uh, that's offered with the Georgia Film Academy to be able to be trained up to um, provide the technical skills needed in the uh, courses and be able to make that connection with industry as well. Yeah, well, um, again, just, just uh, again, just being from that area. And, absolutely. And I, I know I've seen quite a few films that have been filmed between mm -hmm. there and I think even Valdosta or Thomasville, but uh, and I know, I know Fister, I think you're getting ready to build, if not already building a new career academy down there as well. Is so. that in Ben Hill? Ben Hill, yes, sir. They, their career academy is uh, starting up, yes, sir. Okay, okay, All right. Yeah. Just so our AV teachers, I'm sorry. Yeah. So our AV teachers will get some, they will be the ones mostly that are, that would Absolutely, yes. We've, okay. we've had multiple years of teachers going to the Georgia Film Academy uh, down in uh, Fayetteville yep. and, and, and learning hands-on in, in terms of working with Adobe Premiere Pro skills. This is going to bring in AVID, which is a very uh, robust program that's used in film and TV uh, to be able to move forward in, in those skill sets. But then uh, as well within these courses, be able to see all the other jobs within the film industry to be able to support uh, the film and move forward. The best side I always see are those yellow signs on the side of the road pointing directions as to the film uh, location. So mm -hmm. they are great across all of Georgia. Absolutely. Well, Richard, I'd just like to say thank you to the DOE and to Jeff. You know, this is a, a hometown boy that was out in California that came here with a mission and has brought the right expertise. And I think what, what we have mixed here mm -hmm. has made a great big fat great cake, you know, and it's yummy what we're doing. So. Um, Thanks to, to Jeff, to you and your group, and, and what y'all are doing, John, here, and Richard, the team. I mean, this is just blossoming, and, yes, and there's more is. to come. Thank you again for your support. On behalf of the Film Academy, we really, really appreciate the partnership and the support. We're so excited about what's ahead of us. Thank you. You might need to take another tour. There We've got go. some new members that need to come see the Georgia Film Academy. We would love to do that. Count on us. All right. Okay, any other comments, questions pertaining to number four? If not, mm -hmm. move it to the consent agenda. Number five, standards, poultry science career pathway courses, and this is an approval to post for 30 days. So the Georgia Agricultural Education Teachers, along with industry partners, University of Georgia Poultry Science, University of North Georgia Poultry Science, Athens Technical College and state and federal agencies collaborated to create a secondary career pathway designed to introduce students to poultry science and avian science and biotechnology and assist students to transition smoothly to a post-secondary educational pathway or an in-demand career in Georgia poultry industry. The essence of this career pathway grew out of interest in poultry science in our state as the poultry industry is our lead industry in the agricultural sector. This career pathway is designed to give all students the opportunity to complete the basic ag science, poultry science, and avian, avian science and technology pathways. Okay, any comments, questions? Is there anything going on in middle school with this, especially in the areas like Hall County and those areas that have big poultry? Through instructional resources uh -huh. that have been created by the agriculture curriculum coordinator. Okay, all right. You'll have to go to one of the competitions and I know. Yeah. 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 We're gonna come visit. It's fun. Yeah, well if you have a, a and I'll get I'll get with the, the the ag state ag people if you have an op because you have to do you have to do area, then you have to do region, then you have to do state. So if you have the opportunity to do those things, you can see a lot of a lot of the kids in their natural environment excelling quite a bit. So uh, I'll make sure all of you get invites. 
All right. Any other comments or questions about the poultry science? All right. Nothing else. We'll move it to the consent agenda. And uh, number six, PFEA Special Needs Scholarship Program 2021-22 Private School List. So the official code of Georgia annotated, section 20-2-2115, requires the State Board of Education to authorize private schools that will be eligible to participate in the Georgia Special Needs Scholarship Program. Private schools that are interested in participating in the program have until June 30th, 2021 to apply for the 2021-2022 school year and must meet eligibility requirements outlined in rule and law to be considered. Having met these eligibility requirements, the following private schools are seeking to participate in the program. Atlanta Prep LLC in Fulton County, Bullock Academy in Bullock County, Lanier Christian Academy in Hall County, Mount Pisgah Christian School in Fulton County, and Southern Raised Learning Incorporated in Fayette County. How many does that give us now? That are I believe we were at 234 before, so that would put us there about 239 right now. Oh, okay. Okay, any other questions, comments? On that, number six, okay. We'll move it to the consent agenda then. Number seven, local board governance training providers, FY22. So the State Board of Education adopted State Board Governance Standards for local boards as the basis for local school board member training. The board approved the 2021-2022 local board governance training providers at the March State Board of Education meeting. Two providers, the Charter System Foundation and the Center for the Reform of School Systems, requested to be added to this list after the approval in March. The training providers on the attached list, if approved, will conduct local school board member training utilizing curricula aligned with the governance standards for local boards and will meet identified needs for improvement as submitted in local boards training programs. Okay. Comments, questions? Does this, uh, do we now have all of our RISAs involved in the training? Um, I think we have most of them involved. I can check to see if, if there are I a couple that are missing. That, I, but the ones that are on the list. Well, I saw those, those. On, the, on the list here, but, um, you know, I, I can't remember some of the others on that. Yeah. But also, but, this, but the DOE, we're still doing the training in, in finance and the budget. Yes, yes we do yeah. training in finance and budget for all new members. They're on the list. They're on the, okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns? If not, we'll move number seven to the consent agenda. And that is our total agenda for the day. I would like to make one note. I know that uh, last month in March, I mean, or not last month, but at our March meeting, uh, we brought to you the um, student support team rule. Um, if you call that uh, board rule 160-4-2-.32 for changes um, to incorporate the dyslexia requirements. Mm -hmm. Um, after that meeting, we met with many of the um, participating districts that are participating in the pilot, as well as the dyslexia advocacy group, and are going back to make adjustments to that rule. So it won't come back this month because they are working on um, additional amendments to that rule. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay, great. Just as a follow up, Matt, um, myself and Helen met yesterday at uh, Scant Elementary um, in Sand Springs. Sand Springs. Um, and Mr. Cameron, Madeline came back up again, um, Coca Cola. Okay. And we were as well, we had a very, very interesting uh, meeting and uh, continued to learn a lot about dyslexia and having to do with that. So, thank you. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. And, and can I just say this too, Tiffany, and to Richard, the, um, the understanding of how important this is to get this rule right, and I know that when we did a little pushback that the agreement was here with, with everybody, to, because if we don't get this right for our kids, we'll be, it'll, it'll be in the same cycle again. And to open it up and have the parents and the professionals that are really dealing with these kids to be a part of that team, and, and to come in and say, this is what we need because the screening and how we lay it out, the guidelines that are, are really pretty tight, wouldn't you think, Mike, that would necessary for us to get this right for these kids. I just want to say thank you for that willingness to, to say, you know, maybe there are other people that need to, we need to collaborate with that really have some 
some uh, hands-on. And these parents live with it, these children, and they have gone in to multiple people to get uh, expert opinions. And then we have experts in our state, and the, the Skank School is probably the leading school in, in one of the leading schools in Georgia that, um, on this, and it's great to have someone give you and share with you their ideas of what's making it work for students. I'll add that. Yeah, Caitlin, thanks. But uh, they, there were several people, uh, none of the school board members that were there, that said that we, we had emphasized on they said, they said, we get this right, we get the leader in the whole nation. Uh -huh. yeah. well, I think we, the individual we're looking at hiring, if we're able to hire that person, it'll be a top quality. So right. We're very Sounds excited, excited right. about that. All right. Anything else, Ms. Tiffany? That's all I have on my head. All right. I got another question because um, I know I'm just, I don't know why I'm so chatty, but uh, thank you. <laughs> My brain's working some. Richard, I thank you for uh, leaving the standard review for math open another week. Uh, could you just give us a brief update now that it's closed? Uh, um, well, I, I think we're, we're looking at, I mean, we had some, some superintendents and other individuals throughout the state that. Uh, expressed concerns, and again, concerns which we saw from from the uh, the feedback. I mean, initially, as we began to pull that, you know, is it still too much? Is it still age appropriate? And, you know, I think out of the concerns with that, we're, you know, taking a little pause and just trying to look and make sure that it's where we need to be. So we're trying to get the feedback from these individuals. Are we pausing? Are we going to have a team that's going to come back and look at it? So, I think with these with these superintendents and some of the uh, the curriculum directors that have have mentioned that or approached us, so we're you know kind of putting them together and say hey what what are the ideas of what I mean if you're saying you're concerned then I, I need specifics I mean uh, I got I mean I got I mean just to say that it's don't give me broad I need tangibles that, that we and, can look and at. And aren't you batching together the comments and just trying to look at the trends there, that sort of thing? Yeah. yeah. We, we would have had those ready, but since we extended that week, so yeah. it's taken no. a little time to get that. But uh, the initial things, I mean, from what we heard from teachers and, and especially when I know I was down at Bootstrap, and I think some of y'all were at Bootstrap, that, I mean, uh, some of the superintendents came up and said, this is what we're hearing, this is what we're concerned about. So, so, we're, so are we going to move it farther down the road? Well, I think we'd, we, well, I, as far as, I mean, looking at that, I, I, you know, I think once we get the information, I think, like I said, there, there will be uh, a, a team of, of, of these who had, had concerns looking at it uh, within the next week or so. And, and at, based on feedback, that'll determine where we, where we go. If it's something we can move forward, then we move forward. But if we need to, you know, extend it out, uh, you know, we extend it out. I mean, I, I've told people from the beginning, I said, I'm not on a timeline with anything. I said, I want to get it done right. Uh, you know, because once, <laughs> once it's done, uh, you know, I hope that, you know, in, in, in my lifetime, you know, or tenure up here, that I don't, we don't have to come back with, with, you know, revisit math. So, so that's kind of where we are with that right now. So are you putting together this team in the next week or so to look at? It's yeah, yes, yes. I, I mean that's that's our goal right now. Is uh, is there an opportunity for uh, the board to um, give? Who is is there? Who's are we? Le who's leading that team? Do we know? Well, I mean we we I mean we put the group together. Uh, I mean uh, as far as looking at that, I mean so, it was so that group. we already have people. That, uh, well, the reason I was asking him was could we make a suggestion to that whoever's leading it of someone in our districts that we think might be good. To be on that team. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, if you can it's get it to us this quick, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I just went to, you know, for people who, quote, express concern and thought and, and you know, that we met with. I mean, the superintendents had approached me, and, and so I reached out to them. I said, would you be willing, if, if you have concerns, then come together and, and be specific for me? I said, I, again, that, that was my biggest thing. I said, I don't have a problem with it. I just need to know what. What are you looking at? So if we, what changes? I have someone in mind that I think would be just, invaluable. So do I send the name to you? Uh, yeah, just do that. Yeah, uh, I w but I would do it as quick as possible. Okay. So. Well, will you let us know, um, keep us up to date on who's on the committee and when it's meeting and, um, and 
if there's a possibility for any board member to go and maybe observe um, as we've done before in the past I think some might be interested in in just seeing the process again yeah um, so uh, thank you okay sure but but if you do have somebody like that I, I, I think it's either this week or next week we're we're trying again if we can get it done for next month's board meeting then we can it, but like I said, I was just, we're on a time frame. So, uh, but these individuals, they said they wanted to participate. And I said, okay, just give me something tangible that I can see. And I mean, cause I, as I said, when, if you tell me there's too many, then I gotta have some help in seeing what, what do we take away? Okay. Or if it's age appropriate, you know, I just tell me where to move it. We might, we might give them and you might have enough in that age, you know, K through five or whatever, whoever we come, but, um, well, I said, I think a lot of them, I mean, um, we, we did reach out to, I mean, specifically the superintendents. They were the ones that have come to me and, and I think spoke to me at Bootstrap. So that, that was kind of a, a lead with anyone who had concerns. I said, all right, you know, let me know. And so if y'all have somebody, just let me know quickly. So. All right. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? All right. Then we are, we, we beat, we beat budget this time. Well, the charter schools is back. I know, there, right? <laughs> but Jason said it was just all formality. Yeah. But but just I don't know if you saw what number one was on their agenda. <laughs> so it's not. I know it was the budget. Number one.
Welcome to the Audio Conferencing Center. Please enter a conference ID followed by pound. You're now joining the meeting. Yes, sir, I'm in now. Stan DeJarnett, and it's my privilege to chair the District Flexibility and Charter Schools Committee meeting. Um, I know we have some members here that are dialing in. I know we have. Can he speak up, please? I can barely hear him. All right, maybe they can help us with the booth back there. You've been muted. To unmute yourself, press John 6. Did that. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Can it, are you we are going no now? Longer muted. Okay. <laughs> All right. Again, this is Stan DeJarnett, and it's my pleasure to uh, chair this committee on district flexibility and charter schools committee. Um, we have a, some kind of. Still too low. We have some protocols here. Uh, we're going to have uh, Dr. Tiffany Taylor will be. Uh, representing staff and uh, we'll kind of work through the uh, agenda together uh, but we know we'll have the opportunity for the districts or schools who are here to uh, see how things go with their uh, recommendation and their renewal or approval process uh, I know we'll give you a, a, a brief moment to speak uh, and then we'll hear from staff and then I'll turn it over and see if there are any questions from members of this committee so, uh, Dr. Taylor, I understand we have some guests with us this morning, this afternoon. Yes, we do. Thank you. Uh, to start today's committee, if you recall at the board retreat last month, I uh, share with you information related to Senate Bill 153 um, and the system collaborative schools, um, specifically uh, Foothills Education, Mountain Education, and um, Coastal Plains. And so we invited them this uh, 
month to come and share information about uh, their schools and the work that they're doing, and uh, they so graciously accept it, so I will turn it over to them right now. They provide it for you. You should have a copy of their PowerPoint presentation and a white folder of material of packets that they've also supplied. All right, thank you. All right, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Sherry Gibney Sher Sherman, and I serve as a superintendent of Foothills Education Charter High School. And I'll let you meet my two colleagues, and then we've got 15 minutes to make this happen. Hey, good afternoon. My, my name is Wayne Lovell, and I'm with Mountain Education Charter High School, and I'm superintendent there. Good afternoon. I'm Ricky Rents. I'm the superintendent for Coastal Plains Charter High School. And thank you for allowing us. And Tiffany, thank you for the invitation to come this afternoon. And so I can move quickly. We've just got a few slides and a few uh, clarification about who we are and what we do. Uh, we're going to talk about who we are, then who we serve, and the purpose of our network and why we are working together, the results we have to date, and to clarify any uh, conversation that you may have had at your retreat, because we did get to witness that on the recording, and we thank you for that. Uh, opportunity. So the first slide is a quality education producing work ready graduates. This is really important to understand. Not only are our kids getting a high school diploma, but they are work ready. They are earning certificates and they're going into jobs and we're helping them to get jobs, $50,000 a year and more. Uh, we are a network, all three of us are three different LEAs that are out across the state. And we provide uh, experience for an uh, alternate experience for high school students who are not functioning in the regular high school setting. And that's not a judgment. It just doesn't work for some kids. We've been under the authority of the State Charter School Commission for us over the past six years. And all of us meet the standards for a comprehensive performance framework in the areas of academics, operations, and finance. Because I heard that come up during the retreat. You want a quality high school? You got one. And we do make a difference with these kids academically. Our operations are sound and our finances are well in place. We are not a local charter high school. We have a statewide attendance zone. That means every single student in the state of Georgia can come to one of our schools. And we're serving kids from all over the state. And you'll see from 121 counties at this point. Now, if you, the next point, that you, just to make sure you understand, these, we are not a dropout recovery program at all. We are a regular high school. Our kids are earning a regular high school diploma. And it's from, we are all accredited from multiple agencies. And so when they leave us, they're not getting a GED. They are getting a high school diploma. And that matters. And we follow the Georgia School of Excellence standards. As a matter of fact, we're more aligned than probably most of your high schools in the state. The students earn their diplomas. No one gives them a diploma. And so, Ricky, you want to talk a little bit about our staff? Sure. Uh, the next point is that our staff, they're a, high, they're a highly qualified staff. All are certified uh, by the Professional Standards Commission of Georgia and all teach in their content area. The next bullet point is that uh, our students, we use a blended learning model which is face-to-face -face with a teacher and also on, online. We have a self-paced curriculum, and we expect our students to obtain 80% ma mastery of the content. If they, they can't move forward in their course at the end of a module unless they meet that 80% mastery. If they don't meet it, they go back with the teacher and they get help from that tutor, and then they can attempt to take that test again in that module before move, moving forward. Uh, the next point, end of course test. One of the things that the network has done, instead of changing the 20% grade weight, we have kept it. We wanted to make sure we held, we held our students accountable as well as our teachers. And they have met the expectations. Um, that was something that we really had to work hard with, with staff, because they wanted that change but we felt that, that we should still have a high expectation. Uh, one of the things with the pandemic, since we are a blended model, 
we really didn't change a whole lot except for the face-to-face, -face. but teachers were still available online to work with students. Thank you. All right, the next point has to do with probably the, the wheelhouse, an aggressive student service program. Well, we recognize that the students we serve are typically beyond risk. You know, we, we figured they were at risk when they were setting in that local high school. But the majority of the students we serve are a minimum a year behind the cohort group. And so we know that this group is, some people would say wounded or traumatized, but they're on a different path. And it takes a lot of work to do the re-engagement and do the hard work to get them back on a path of getting their high school diploma. So we put a lot of our, our budgets to the financial piece to work in this area with student services. Every, every student that comes in to Foothills or Coastal or Mount Ned, they're assigned a mentor. And that mentor has some specific duties to make sure they are helping that student set weekly and monthly, monthly goals with attendance and academics to engage them in some so, social emotional learning. So we would put a lot of emphasis on that connection to develop those relationships. We have the counselors, we have grad coaches. We put so much to get into what's going on in the student's life, the barriers that they have to try to remove those and resource them with things that can help them to move forward and get in that high school diploma. What do we look like today, our makeup? When you look at our student population among the, the, the three systems, we have over 6,000 students. We have 17.9% special ed students, so you can see where we serve a diverse pop population. We serve gifted. We have dual enrollment, whether it's at a technical school or a college. Uh, we serve 132 students, our Department of Corrections. That's something that, that, that Foothills does as well as we have 83 in the Youth Challenge pro Program and in, in partnership with the National Guard. We've, we've had 690 graduates in the, this past year, and we've had over 6,000 to date between the, the three systems. Next slide. Now this data was pulled from the Governor's Office of Student Achievement. And if you take a look at those numbers, that's a snapshot of a four-year period. And although we're coming out of a pandemic at the moment, it kind of overshadows a crisis within the state. And if you think about the economic impact of that number in red, of students that are not obtaining a high school education, it's a bare minimum. And we talk about the difference in lifetime earnings between someone that has a high school diploma and someone that doesn't. Depending between who you're using as a resource, that can be anywhere from $250,000 to $500,000 in lifetime earnings. That's pretty significant. And as a son of a high school dropout, I know the impact it has on an individual. And we stand in a, in a place where I think we're in the gap to serve that population. And unfortunately, you can see we're only meeting a need of about 4.3% when you look at the total enrolled with us. With your help, we hope that we can partner and reach a greater number of that percent that's not actively engaged in pursuing their high school education. And this is a map so you can see where we are. And you can see there are gaps across the state. And, and we are really excited, truthfully, about Senate Bill 153. We were a little surprised, I have to tell you, we were caught off guard. But a very positive result can happen from this. Because every student in the state of Georgia deserves the option to have this kind of schooling process if it works better for them and their families. Uh, and we want to be part of the solution working with you, with the State Department of Education and the staff, Alan and Tiffany and Moore, we can do this and our kids deserve it. But there are gaps. We're three statewide LEAs that are out there with 51 sites between us. Right now, we just did a calculation, 112 counties are represented in our enrollment. Uh, and there's more. Uh, Mount Ned has 17 sites with 2,600 kids. Foothills has 20 sites serving 2,500 kids. 
And, uh, and that includes three correction sites. We're in three prisons. We've been there uh, for six years, and we're at two youth challenge sites. And that was some confusion. Uh, the youth challenge program is actually a national program sponsored by the National Guard, and it's a boot camp environment for 22 weeks where kids go and they have to have a schooling uh, opportunity and those who choose to do high school come to us. And so that's who we are and where we are. Now for the past two years, we've been working with legislators about how can we sustain this and how can we push this out so more kids can have access. We wanna be reasonable about this. How can we grow in a reasonable way so it can be sustained over time? And that's what we're looking for. We visited with Senator Blake Tillery, Senator Terry England, and we've met with budget side staff on both sides of the house trying to work through this. And this is before we even heard of Senate Bill 153. But once we heard about that, we jumped all over this. What can we do to make this happen and make it be productive? We met with the House Pro Tem Representative Jan Jones, House Committee Chair and Representative Matt Dubnik, and again, the Senate Education Chair, Senator Chuck Payne, and then we went on. Chris Irwin came to visit us, du uh, Representative Dubnik came to visit us, and we've had more visitors. They want to see what we have to offer. And we think our partnership with the DOE and, and the Board of Education, we can do this. And we want to be part of making the solution. And I saw that Laura Holcomb is here. She now serves as the Executive Director of the State Charter School uh, um, commission and Laura's leadership and their work they made sure that you are getting a good product and you are getting three school systems who have worked hard to prove their worthiness that we can make standards both you know in three areas academics and in operations and in finance so you're getting a gift and we are just real proud to work with you so that we can really address this issue that Wayne pointed out, the number of kids who need our help. So now we'd like to take any questions that you may have out there. Uh, thank you. Thank all three of you for, for the presentation. I'd like to open it up this time to uh, any of the members of the committee if they have a question. Um, I think to, to be fair to them, uh, it, I think it's uh, not good use of our time to ask questions about how they ended up here about the legislation itself because the fact of the matter is they're they're ours now but if you have questions about their operations about their governance structure about uh some of their successes and and, and challenges please i mean i think this is your opportunity to ask those questions Well, hearing that, if there's anyone joining us virtually that would like to ask a question. I, I had one question. Scott. Uh, thank you, Dr. DeJarnett. Um, <clears throat> just uh, on the, the testing side of things, um, uh, with the EOCs, are you, and they have to be administered in person, so they're coming in, and um, how many physical locations was testing conducted at? All right. We, we t yes, is a quick answer to that. And we do what's called mid-month testing. We test every month. And so we, we are testing in person on site. I just know it's a challenge during the pandemic. It and, sure uh, is. Okay. All right. It has it, not been simple. Was that affecting your participation or anything? Well, enrollment is down like, you know, the rest of the state, you know, and so our, and they're coming back now. Thank you goodness you know they're coming back and they need us because the personal contact that Wayne that that's key to our success is the, the forming that prof uh, professional relationships personal relationships and it's we're coming back excellent thank you yes sir Ms. more thank you I don't have a, a question but I do have a comment I have uh, worked with Youth Challenge and Dr. Carden and been there and, and talked to the students and all, and I have seen wonderful things that you guys are doing with that program. It is just, um, you know, it's, it's to be praised. And, and I thank you and the parents that I talked to, they, they raved about everything that you did to get their students back involved and in uh, and back in tune with their academics to be able to get a 
uh, high school education, and some have even gone on to get, um, you know, <laughs> their doctorate degree. Like well, one doctor that I met that's, that was in Youth Challenge that thought that he couldn't learn, and he is now an MD. Um, so thank you for what you do. And thank you for sharing that story. There's a lot of gems out there. Our kids are winners. They are winners. Something has just jumped the track in their life, and they have to be reminded that they are winners, including the kids at Youth Challenge. And that's been one of our proudest accomplishments. Those kids are learning. And what we've been able to develop, uh, they only get 22 precious weeks, and then they're dismissed. Well, we've set it up where we will serve them after they leave in what we call an extension program. So more kids are earning their high school diploma. They choose to stay with us. Thank you for saying that. And you're right, there's a bunch of kids like that out there. Rainey? Yeah, I had uh, one quick follow up too. And um, you know, the, when uh, I, I see the slide presentation and the header says the network system, so it infers obviously collaboration uh, between you. Do you see much mobility between each one of these institutions? And between them ourselves. You know, the nature of our kids that we serve, and this is not a judgment, it's just the reality of what they're trying to do to get through life, is they're mobile. They're very mobile. That's my, that's my so point. within our 20 sites, they go around. But we also have kids that go over to Mountain Ed. If they have an aunt that lives in, in Cleveland, Georgia, they're moving up there. And so we can connect and get those kids plugged in. We have a lot of kids, you were asking about testing. And so we have some kids in the virtual environment that need to be tested, but they were down in South Georgia. So I said, Ricky, we need some help with testing. Can you help us? And so they'll do the testing uh, for us. And as long as the person is trained, et cetera. So there is some mobility between us and within us. Excellent, thank you. Our goal is to, to address every barrier that we come across. We don't turn our way and say, we can't do this. We leverage flexibility, and that's what this committee is about, is how do you use flexibility to allow kids to be successful? And that's what we do. Sam. I, I cannot wait to get to say more. <laughs> uh, yes. And this is Matt Hoffman. OK, Matt, go ahead. Um, sorry, I can't be there in person. There's, there's been a lot of question of average FCE cost, the difference. Can we briefly talk about that uh, since they're there with us? I think they have someone. I see Bonnie coming up. Uh, yes, and, and these kids are, are more expensive to serve. Let's be clear about that. And so, they, but Bonnie, if you'll speak to that. Is your question, what is the average FT cost across? It is, just why is it higher? Why is it, why is it higher? Thank you. Um, yes. Just because the education of alternative students is traditionally higher. If you look at a traditional school, alternative ed students and students that need the student services that um, Wayne has mentioned and, and other things, um, it, it costs more to educate that child. Very similar to costing more to educate the special ed child. We all have larger special ed populations as a percentage um, than a lot of traditional schools as well. So, did that answer your question? Mr. Well, Donaldson, uh, what, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Matt. Go ahead, Matt. What is your average e cost? Uh, it's actually not n the same at each site, um, but if you took the three of us and averaged it together, it'd be about $11,000 per FTE, but I do need to say that that is without the contributions from our partnering sites, and they contribute um, between uh, 1500 and 2000 um, per FTE on some studies that we've done, things that they provide, like the network infrastructure, computers, um, facilities, and all of those kind of things. So if you add that in there, it would be closer to probably 13000 Thank you. That's an in-kind contribution. Yes, it's an in-kind okay. contribution. Yes, right. thank you, Dr. You know, Stan, I would love for you to have us come back and talk about our business model. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. We have broken ceiling thank you uh is there any members of your staff that are here that you'd like to introduce briefly before we move on All right. this is bonnie Keep, keep us. Uh, bo bonnie is uh, the assistant superintendent we have about a thousand employees because most people are part-time but she's full-time and she's over hr and she's over the uh all the budgeting so this is bonnie knight and we're very lucky to have thank her. you 
most of about 20% of us, including me, are retired, and so we do this part time. And then where's Greg? Greg. Staying and, at the back. This is Greg Stevens. He is our regional director for uh, council. You want to just say yourself? Hey, Greg, good to see you again. Yes, uh, I know some of you. Um, I, I previously worked at the State Charter Schools Commission and the Georgia Department of Education before that. I, I try and help on legal and policy matters and um, support these schools however I can. And we're very lucky. He, he knows both sides of the street. And Paul? Well, my name is Paul Williams. I've met many of you. I spent eight years um, on the um, State Charter School Commission, most recently as the, the past chairman. And to be honest, I have watched this school since they spun off from Mountain Ed, at least Foothills, and admired their mission, admired what they were doing, and I just finally decided I was going to do something that, that had an inherent value in it. And um, uh, Dr. Gibney Sherman was, was generous enough to offer me an opportunity with them. So late last year I came over and obviously there was a conflict with the commission. So I left the commission because I couldn't work with someone who we govern. But uh, it's the impact on the kids that are involved in these schools are words are not adequate. It's just short of trying to tell you how great being a grandfather is. Um, <laughs> it's just you can't describe the impact that's being made on kids. Thank you, Paul. I have uh, Steve Bartlett, I'm one of my uh, associate superintendent. Roger Fitzpatrick, he's one of my region directors. And Dr. Chris Lemieux, uh, he does a lot of work with, with research and with grant writing. And uh, that's all I have with me today. I'm all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you on behalf of the state board and this committee for coming today and sharing this information with us. And we look forward to the relationship that we see as a very positive and productive one as we move forward. So, but thank you for being here today. Pardon me? Can I say something real quick? Uh, yes. Uh, Ms. Petty has a comment to make before y'all get away. So just thank you for what you do. And I was a mentor at Mountain Education uh, when Mountain Education first opened in Murray County. So if any of you have an opportunity to visit any of these this is very specific, but it has a lot of moving parts, and those moving parts move at different speeds in different directions at any given moment in time. So, you know, if you have an opportunity to go, uh, especially the, the in person there, it, it'll, it, it brings a different perspective when you can actually see those kids. And, and um, being a mentor was very eye opening and uh, something I would not, I, I am very glad I did it. Thank you. We're glad you did. Thank you again. Dr. Taylor, we'll turn it back over to you and let's uh, move, get on with the agenda. Um, Stan, just a, a, po yes. a point Professor of personal Swain. privilege. Um, I ask, um, many of you have already been introduced or have met or have heard from the reigning Georgia Teacher of the Year, Tracy Pendley, who's here with us. And uh, by legislation, she is now an ex officio member of the State Board of Education. So I asked her to join us up here today. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, I want uh, everybody to recognize her, and uh, she'll be joining us again tomorrow for the State Board of Education meeting and uh, continuing with the very, very important work that she has throughout the state. Right. So thank you and welcome. Welcome, Tracy. Dr. Taylor? Okay, we'll move forward. We've got a number of items on uh, the agenda, so we'll uh, begin with item one, which is a charter amendment for Charles R. Drew Charter School. So Drew Charter School seeks to amend its charter contract to extend its attendance priority zone, priority C, through the 2021-2022 school year. Attendance zone priority C for Drew Charter prioritizes enrollment for siblings, <coughs> students who were enrolled in the school during the 2016-17 school year and who were born on or before September 1st, 2016. This priority was intended to ensure the siblings of these students would be able to matriculate through Drew Charter's cradle to college pipeline and last year, Drew Charter admitted seven students via this Priority C sibling status into their current pre-K programs. Without this amendment to extend the priority through the remainder of their contract, which is one additional year, these students would be unable to matriculate into their kindergarten program for the 2021-2022 school year and would suffer the unintended consequence of being removed from the pipeline. So it really is a cleanup measure from when the contract was originally drafted 
I mean, apparently left off a year, they left off a year from the extension of that uh, provision and just want to make sure it's captured. Is there here, anyone here from Drew Charter that's planning to speak today? No. Okay. Uh, any questions from members of the committee for Dr. Taylor? Uh, is there any objection to moving this to co the consent agenda for tomorrow? Hearing none, we'll move it to the consent agenda. Item two. Item two is a charter renewal for the Heart of Georgia College and Career Academy. So Heart of Georgia College and Career Academy is seeking a renewal of its charter contract for another five-year term beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending in June 30th, 2026. Heart of Georgia College and Career Academy as a local charter school was approved for a new contract by the Dublin City Board of Education and pre-certified by the Technical College System of Georgia as a Georgia College and Career Academy. I don't think we have, do we have Heart of Georgia online? They, they couldn't be with us today. So. Any questions from members of the committee? Hearing none, is there any objection to adding this to the consent agenda? All right, we'll add that to the consent agenda. Item three. Item three is a charter system renewal for Baldwin County Schools. So the Baldwin County Schools Board of Education approved the Baldwin County Schools charter system renewal petition on February 9, 2021. In their last charter term, Baldwin County utilized their flexibility to support the system's college and career academy they launched the Parent University to provide resources and strengthen parents' capacity as advocates for their children and create literacy design collaborative professional learning com sorry, communities for creating literacy-rich assignments and courses across content areas. If approved, Baldwin County Schools will utilize the flexibility granted within their charter to support their STEAM initiatives, a summer enrichment program, and the improvement of their Montessori Academy. On April 9, 2021, the Charter Advisory Committee voted to recommend approval for a five-year charter system renewal for Baldwin County Schools for July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2026. And I believe we have Baldwin uh, members from Baldwin County on the line if you have any questions. Superintendent Dr. Price, and staff. Dr. Price, are you with us virtually? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. Uh, I am at the airport, so if you hear background noise, that's what it is. Um, so good afternoon. Glad to be with you. Dr. Price, do you have any information you'd like to share about Baldwin County uh, Schools and your charter system renewal with the committee? I just wanted to say that the charter has served us well as a school district and a lot of the flexibility um that we needed in order to address um the academic achievement of our students um and also allow us to be innovative and i think that you will see the charter contract that we have done that um we haven't had state assessments but if you look at our state assessments you will see that we have been able to increase um our performance significantly i especially want to highlight our graduation rate from the time that we became a charter system to today, we've increased the graduation rate from 66% to over 90%. We've also established a Montessori program in partnership with Georgia College that serves six-week-old babies all the way to age five. And uh, we've been able to um, expand our College and Career Academy from being a standalone College and Career Academy to a wall-to-wall -wall College and Career Academy. So the entire high school is now a College and Career Academy which allows us the flexibility um, through our charter to hire industry experts um, as teachers. Um, and so we are very excited and looking forward to having our charter renewed. Any questions from members of the committee for either Dr. Price or Dr. Taylor? Dr. Price, it's good to hear your voice and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Um, Hearing no uh, no comments or questions, is anybody opposed to moving this to the consent agenda? All right, so moved. Moving on. Thank you, Dr. Price, for being with us. Thank you so much, and thank, thank you to the members of our team for joining us. Mm -hmm. Item four. Item four is charter system renewal for Carrollton City Schools. So the Carrollton City Schools Board of Education approved the charter system renewal petition on November 10th, 2020. 
In their last charter term, Carrollton City Schools utilized their flexibility to provide flexible service models to serve students based on their individual needs and use their supplemental funding to provide transportation for families to attend parent support sessions and to start their STEM labs. If approved, Carrollton City Schools will utilize their flexibility to improve literacy through the expansion of innovative instructional models and advanced learning opportunities and build staff capacity through professional learning and the exploration of compensation incentives to attract and retain high quality staff. On February 12, 2001, the Charter Advisory Committee voted to recommend approval for a five-year charter system renewal for Carrollton City Schools for July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2026. And there are two representatives from Carrollton City who are here and are happy to speak with you. Good afternoon. Goodness, I'm equal parts terrified and excited, so forgive me for that. Uh, I'm Karen Wild, and I'm the Director of School Improvement, and I'm here to represent um, our superintendent, Dr. Um, Mark Albertus, who would love to be here, but he is actually with our um, students who are signing their military service agreements, and um, I felt like that would be greatly appreciated by this group. So um, I just want to take a second of your time, maybe a minute, um, to express our thanks. Um, and our appreciation for, for the opportunity to be part of a, a, a charter system. Um, last night, I believe it was, I emailed um, Mr. Mueller at about 11.30. He immediately answered. Um, every piece, and that, that he shouldn't have. He well, should not have done that. Right? <laughs> um, and every time we seek support, it is there. I, I want to say this to you specifically outside of the, the charter setting. Um, the leadership and the guidance that the board offers our state, certainly um, that what our superintendent does to guide us in a normal setting, much less what's happened during this pandemic, is um, it's awe-inspiring. So thank you for that, genuinely. Uh, we feel supported as a school system. Um, we feel like Truly, your efforts are, are focused on what's right for, for students in order to, to move forward to be successful members of society. So, sorry, that's an aside. Through, this, through our opportunity to participate in a charter system, we feel like probably the most important piece that it offers us is um, through our school governance teams. <clears throat> The structure and the consistency of those meetings each year allow teachers, administrators, community members, and business partners to sit together at a table in, a, in an informal setting and have conversations. And those conversations are truly the flow of information from within the school, outside, being broadcast by those folks, and then also from our community into our school. So that the work that we are doing truly aligns with the needs of our community. So we're very thankful for that structure. Um, in addition to that, we love the flexibility option. Um, we, you heard uh, Dr. Taylor, sorry, <laughs> Dr. Taylor shared of, of our innovative opportunities, but you know, education is a competitive field right now. Uh, who would have known that? several years back that we were actually going to have to compete for the students that live in our neighborhood. And that's a great thing. I don't say that as a negative. It ups the level of expectation for all of us. Flexibility for Carrollton City allows us to customize to meet the needs not of all of our students, but of each of our students. And, and just like was shared before, um, we came up from the, the network we're seeking ways to truly reach individuals in a unique way. The charter system allows us to do that. I want to just give you a couple of examples. Um, our high school principal shared with me that we have an incredible uh, world language department. Flexibility allowed us to hire two individuals who have Spanish uh, bachelor degrees but chose to go teach their first five years in Honduras. Those folks are able to come back to Carrollton, <laughs> Georgia, and offer that experience to our students. It's an incredible opportunity. Um, that flexibility allowed us that opportunity. In addition to that, we've started a, um, an expansion of our CTAE program by adding uh, Railing Construction Academy, and students are able to, to in that moment, work those construction skills that will immediately lead to employment. We were able to hire Chris Stone, who's an industry engineer, to actually teach those students. That's real life, folks. <laughs> um, 
We also have, uh, in regard to our curriculum, our SGTs give in input into truly the moves we're making. You'll remember, and maybe even feel some pains right now, of math standards and the changing in the high school setting of where we had math one, two, three, and four. Our SGTs were a critical part of revising that and moving to a more traditional model of algebra one, two, and geometry. Um, Thankful that we, we are focused on, on hiring practices and instruction, but there's also the whole child. Our high school is beautiful. Please come see us. Um, and it sits across the street from the student parking lot. Um, we have a campus. All, all four of our schools are on the same campus, and there's this lovely road that runs right through our campus. Um, Parking is on the other side. Our SGTs actually generated the idea to um, encourage our city to bring in um, a flashing stop sign and allow for there to be an official crosswalk um, in two different places. So that, that was another empowerment that we had through SGTs. Um, I mentioned earlier that we really do uh, value the input of our families and our community. And I've brought with me today Ms. Laurie Ann Lucky. She has served um, on our SGT at the elementary school and then has kind of moved into a second round of our upper elementary school. And I thought you might like to hear from her in regard to what she sees um, as, as a parent. Laurie. Good afternoon. My name is Laurie Ann Lucky, and I am the mother that won't go away. But I have a beautiful nine-year-old daughter, and she's had the privilege to be in the Carrollton City School System for the first five years of her career in school. Um, hopefully, she has a lot more years in the system. We have been so thankful that this is our story. We have been we're transplants from South Georgia, and the fact that our daughter has been introduced to the academies to STEM, at the age of six. She has had uh, music, art, Spanish as a second language introduced to her in the classroom in four week blocks. She loved it, but I saw the value of the early introduction of that. She learned to grow hydroponically in the classroom, harvest it and eat it in the cafeteria. She learned to grow in raised beds. She learned art, different artists and different um, types of art but that was all in a four-week block through several years of school. She also has had the opportunity to be introduced to violin through an after-school club. She is continuing her violin training. I would never have put a violin in her hand, and she is quite good at it and successful with it. Uh, she was explaining to me last evening that this year, through her ROV, the Remote Operated Vehicle Club, she gained confidence in her classroom setting. I, um, she's about as confident as I am. I did not uh, think she needed to gain confidence, but she said, Mommy, I really feel more confident in the classroom because I have learned to work in a team environment and we problem solved together and we competed and uh, they did come in second, which I'm not sure how that PVC pipe scenario floated, much less did its little thing it's supposed to do. But they went to Savannah last weekend and got second. But she said, I felt more confident after ROV in, in my classroom. I said, well, I am thankful for ROV. And I'm thankful for the clubs that allow her just the opportunity. She has soldering as a um, side hobby. I have never soldered. I don't, I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> but I, you know, she and my dad were soldering. She said, Papa, I brought this home from school and we can build this little plate. And he got out a soldering gun and they're learning to solder. But allowing the introduction to a larger world at a young age, it's just normal for her. Like she, she thinks that's the way it's supposed to be. I was raised in a very small environment and I didn't have those introductions. And I am so thankful that this is her story and that I get to be a part. Um, when we were going back into school after the whole pandemic thing, um, I got a phone call from one of our uh, assistant principals. Miss Lucky, what do you think about going back to school? I said, please take her. But just what are your thoughts on this? What are your, do you feel comfortable? Do you feel like the, have you talked to people in the community? Do they feel comfortable in this? And 
I want to thank what our school has done. We've been, we delayed a month and then we have been in school. Her life has been very normal through this school year. Yes, a mask was necessary for that, but she was provided a very good education and opportunities when the rest of the world was in an upheave, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Wilde. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. We've taken probably way more than we should have, but we greatly appreciate the opportunity for you to, uh, to hear us, but also um, to support the uh, opportunity to participate in a charter system. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee for either the representatives of the district or Dr. Taylor? Thank both of you for coming today. We appreciate your testimony and I appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any opposition to moving this to the consent agenda for tomorrow? Hearing none, we'll move it to the consent agenda. Moving on. All right, item number five is charter system renewal for Doherty County Schools. So the Doherty County Schools Board of Education approved the Doherty County Schools Charter System Renewal Petition on December 14, 2020. In their last charter system term, Doherty County utilized their flexibility and supplemental funding to align student support services to match students with external wraparound services that meet their social, physical, and or academic needs beyond the regular school day, to provide experiential STEM instruction, to increase achievement in math and science, and to develop extensive writing programs at the elementary level. If approved, Doherty County Schools will utilize the flexibility and supplemental funding granted within their system charter to support early literacy initiatives and increasing social and emotional supports for students. On February 12, 2021, the Charter Advisory Committee voted to recommend approval for a five-year charter system renewal for Doherty County Schools for July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2026. And we have a new Superintendent Dyer is here to speak from Doherty County Schools. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to present just a few highlights about the Doherty County School System and the work we've done uh, using the flexibility provided uh, as a charter system. Uh, first, I want to recognize the members of my team who are online, uh, Mr. Vincent Davis, who's our Associate Superintendent for District Effectiveness, uh, Dr. Karen Riggins Taylor, who's a principal at Robert Harvey Elementary School, uh, Dr. Trina Bush, who's a principal at Lake Park Elementary School, Dr. John I. Davis, who's a principal at uh, International Studies Elementary Charter School, uh, Dr. Tamara Davis, who's a school governance team member at uh, Doherty Comprehensive High School, and then our charter system office, Ms. Bessie Graper, uh, and uh, Dr. Jewel Faison. Well, when we started this uh, about five years ago, we had several goals and areas of focus. Uh, one was uh, to increase organizational effectiveness. Some of you who have been here for a while uh, can remember some of the challenges we had with financial management uh, years ago. And so we wanted to make sure we focused on organizational effectiveness and we've done just that. I think right now uh, we've uh, made great strides in our financial management as well as the grants management area. Uh, we also want to assess and align our student support services to match our student needs, both academically and non-academically. And of course we focused on the academic needs and we uh, focus on rigor uh, and relevance in our education. But on the, on the uh, non-academic side, uh, we realized that we had great needs in terms of health services. So uh, we now have four school-based health centers, uh, two school-based vision, vision centers, uh, two school-based dental centers, and uh, just last year we opened our first school-based mental health center to meet the non-academic needs of our students. And those are in the buildings, they're available to all of our students as well as their families. Uh, we want to enhance student regulation, problem solving, and uh, conflict resolution. So we uh, expanded our PBIS program. We also added our restorative practices. We had each of our secondary school principals and administrators as well as our uh, school resource officers be trained in restorative practices. And we've seen about a 25% decline in our student discipline referrals. Our College and Career Academy, we wanted to focus on uh, career-based educational options. And we started the Commodore Conyers College and Career Academy. And I'm happy to say that we have 14 uh, high demand career fields that we uh, provide training for in that academy. And this year, we had over 50 uh, paid internship commitments from people in the community that give our, that give our students uh, not only an opportunity to learn in the classroom uh, and get work-based learning, but also get paid while they do so. 
As a result of some of those activities, we've seen an increase in our graduation rate from the mid-60s uh, to the mid-80s. And we've also seen the vast majority of our schools uh, beat the odds uh, by, by uh, measure of by the State Board of Education's measure. The next five years, we're going to focus on early literacy. Uh, we're going to focus on academic rigor and relevance. Uh, we're going to look at uh, expanding our social and emotional supports for our students. And we're going to invest in human capital. Uh, as you know, the teacher's shortage problem is growing, and so we have to find ways to be innovative to attract uh, the best and the brightest to Southwest Georgia. And also, we're going to focus on family and community engagement. I'm happy to say uh, that uh, in December, we were approved, our, our charitable foundation was approved. Uh, we received our 501c3 by the IRS. And uh, sometime later this year, we're going to uh, launch the Village, uh, an educational foundation uh, for education and excellence in Doherty County. And we named it the Village intentionally because we always say it takes a village to raise a child. So we're going to invite people in the community to become a part of the Village by being a part of our foundation. I could go on and on, but I only have five minutes, and I'm not going to go over my time. I certainly thank you for having me here today. I thank my committee members, uh, my team members, for being online to support, to, ask, to answer any questions that you may have. And at this time, I'll uh, end my comments and turn it back over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. It's, it's good to see you. Uh, any questions or comments from members of the committee? Mike, Mr. Royal? Thank you for being here again. It's great to see the uh, progress you've been making over the years since uh, so, so follow. <laughs> and it's not always been pleasant meetings here. That's right. It's great to be here and celebrating the successes and uh, continue those. Uh, you mentioned the four big school health centers and mental health centers. Tell me a little bit more about those uh, what, what you're doing, the successes you're seeing around that. Well, we are. Uh, we have a high poverty rate in Doherty County. And, um, and we always talk about the academic needs of our students, and we certainly do our best to meet those. But sometimes we have non-academic needs that go unmet, and they impact the child's ability to learn. Yes, sir. So we, uh, it all started with a phone call uh, uh, to me from the uh, then chief operating officer for a federally qualified health center, uh, Albany Area Primary Health Care. We were in leadership Albany together. And after our graduation, she called me and said, Ken, I have a great idea. And I said, what is it, Shelly? And she said, I want to. I want to put a school-based health center in one of your schools. And I thought, why? <laughs> and so this was, this was uh, years ago. And, and, uh, and so I trusted her. She trusted me. We knew each other. So I all began with that relationship. And she explained to me uh, the benefits of a school-based health center. And so we, we said, I said, OK, we, let's, let's do it. And she said, I have one problem. I said, what's that? She said, I don't have any money for the construction. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so we invested $75,000 in, in, in renovating the uh, area of our building that was going unused to create uh, our first school-based health center with two exam rooms uh, and other features that we need, like a, like a pediatrician's office. And so uh, based on the success of that, they had a grant for operations. Based on that success, uh, we were able to leverage uh, the success of that school-based health center to, to increase our capacity by three more school-based health centers, two dental centers, a vision center, center and a mental health center. And uh, we've, we serve students at the schools. We also provide transportation students at other schools based on the zones they, 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 they're in, and we provide transportation to those centers when they don't have a center in their school. Um, and we've seen tremendous uh, increase in support and usage of the centers, not only by the children at our school system, but also by their siblings and their families, because a lot of times those, those families don't have primary care physicians, and they, they practice care by going to the emergency room when, it, when issues become acute. So this way, we can, we can provide for preventive service care and well checks, wellness checks rather, for those students and catch problems ahead of time before they become uh, issues and also uh, just to get them in a routine of practicing good uh, uh, dental care and health care. And so it's been a tremendous success. We just had a tour last week. As a matter of fact, we had three superintendents come through to take a look at our services. They're looking at doing it in their school systems and we put them in contact with our uh, Albany Area Primary Health Care to put them in contact with the qualified uh, health care centers in their areas to make sure they can follow that same model if it works for them. I don't know if I addressed your question thoroughly enough, no, Mr. Yeah, it is, because I was thinking about that model versus the telehealth model, integrated models. Yeah. That's we do. We, we just got a grant uh, through all of the area primary health care, but we do uh, telehealth uh, as well uh, for folks that don't come in, particularly, it was particularly effective during the pandemic. We also provide telecounseling in our behavioral health center. So we have uh, rooms, private rooms in some schools 
uh, where students can go when, they, when the appointment's up, they go and they log in uh, in a secure uh, virtual meeting format and they have conversations with the, uh, the, the behavior counselor and, and the uh, behavior health center. And we also have in-person appointments now too. Is there a, uh, a full-time nurse in that facility? Each of our school-based health centers is staffed by a, uh, a nurse practitioner nurse. or a physician's assistant. Right. And we, we, we did that intentionally also because they can see uh, children and adults. If we had a pediatrician, they would just be able to see a, 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 the children. And so, we, uh, so the, that was intentional. In each, in each of our dental centers, we have, uh, of course, we have a full, fully licensed dentist an optometrist in our, in our uh, vision center. Any other questions? Any objection to moving this to the consent agenda? Hearing none will be moved. Mr. Thank Dyer, you. it's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Taylor. All right, item, item number six. Item number six, it's a charter system renewal for Floyd County Schools. The Floyd County Schools Board of Education approved their charter system renewal petition on December 7, 2020. Their last charter system term, Floyd County utilized their flexibility to expand pathways to graduation through technology integration, blended learning, credit bearing <coughs> internships, and uh, system developed virtual learning and alternative graduation plans. If approved, Floyd County Schools will utilize their flexibility within their system charter to support students' ability to meet grade level standards through after hours homework assistance, blended learning and professional development for staff, and provide relevant and alternative education delivery models to increase pathways to graduation. On February 12, 2001, they were approved by the Charter Advisory Committee for a five-year renewal for July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2026. Emily, we have Superintendent White on the line for Floyd County. Good afternoon. I'm Glenn White, Superintendent of the Floyd County School System, and thank you so much for considering our charter renewal today. I have with me several members of our team. Sherry Childs, who is our Fine Arts Coordinator. Lenore Doss, who is our Public Relations Coordinator. Tanya Welchel, who is the Principal at Johnson Elementary School. John Parker, who is our Chief Academic Advisor. Jamie, uh, Jamie Alcorn, who is the Principal at Pepperell High School. And Robin Borders, who is my Administrative Assistant. Okay. And also, Danny Waits has joined us online today. He is one of our board members and also has been a member of our LSTC Serving the Cave Spring Community. Our charter has allowed us to have flexibility as far as dealing with our students and allowing for innovation inside our school system. The whole objective being to better serve our students so we can have a higher academic achievement level. We have demonstrated this through high SAT and ACT scores, also scores on our milestones, and a high graduation rate this past year for a system wide of 94.6. We feel like as we move forward that our charter will continue to allow this kind of flexibility and innovation. And we are looking at in the summer, providing summer school in the fall, also offering extra academic support after school as we proceed forward through the COVID situation. We're looking at this situation from the perspective of we're going to invest in our students, use our charter, and we continue to improve our academic achievement. I say this often and I will say it to you today. We are a good school system. That is not my goal. We will be a great school system. And I think the charter will help us get to where we're going. And I feel like within the next five years of our charter, we will be the great school system that I envision for us. So with that being said, I don't want to tie up any more of your time, but I'll be glad and my uh, committee will be glad to take any questions you might have for us. Any questions from the committee members for <coughs> Superintendent or Dr. Taylor? Hearing none, thank you very much for your presentation this afternoon, sir. And we, we thank you for joining us. Any objection to moving this to the consent agenda? Hearing none, we'll move it to the consent agenda. On to the next item, Dr. Taylor. Item number seven is charter system renewal for Fulton County Schools. 
Fulton County Schools Board of Education approved their charter system renewal petition on December 10th, 2020. In their last charter term, Fulton County utilized their flexibility to provide broader curriculum options, such as classes to prepare students for multiple pathways that include vocational students and life skills, including new ways to earn course credit, flexibility and sequencing, and expanded foreign language and fine arts, performance management enhancements, such as performance-based recruitment, placement, and retention of staff, and school culture enhancements, such as incentives and supports for increased parental involvement. If approved, Fulton County Schools will utilize the flexibility granted within their system charter to implement a tiered value-added flexibility model that utilizes innovation at the school level to drive scalable innovations and provide flexible, integrated, and differentiated instruction through student-focused learning environments grounded in research-based curriculum and intervention that support student growth. On February 12, 2021, the Charter Advisory Committee voted to recommend Fulton for a five-year renewal. I believe we have Mr. Ryan Moore from Fulton County Schools on the line. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. I um, just wanted to add a couple of highlights to our future as we evolve as one of the larger charter systems in the state. Um, is really to leverage our tiered value-added flexibility model where we look to our schools to innovate and drive scalable innovations that lead to district flexibilities. Um, we are continuing to grow our accountability model that includes um, real-time dashboards for both board and community viewing of all of our data as it relates to district and school strategic uh, plans so we have that data readily available to all of our stakeholders and we continue to look for transformative approaches to problem solving by training not just our school-based staff but our parents and our teachers and community members in approaches like design thinking um, trago ed so they know how to solve local problems that meet the needs of their students so we appreciate your time today um, we're happy to take any questions if you have any questions from the committee Hearing none, Dr. Moore, thank you for your being here with us today. Uh, Dr. Taylor, uh, thank you. Uh, any objection to moving this to the consent agenda? All right, so moved. Let's move on. Item number eight, charter system renewal for Liberty County Schools. Liberty County Schools Board of Education approved their charter system renewal petition on October 13th, 2020. In their last charter term, Liberty County utilized their flexibility to increase fine arts and performing arts opportunities extend instructional time and provide flexible scheduling for math and reading courses, support the system college and career academy, and increase the availability of high school credit opportunities in middle school. If approved, Liberty County Schools will utilize the flexibility granted within their system charter to increase digital course content, develop a reading transition course, and support their retired educators supporting student learning and achievement program. They were approved for a five-year, or recommended for a five-year charter system renewal by the Charter Advisory Committee on February 12th, 2021. I believe we have Superintendent Perry on the line for Liberty County. Good afternoon. This is Susan Aydan, I'm Superintendent for Teaching and Learning. Um, Dr. Perry has been with us, but has had to step out. He is the Commission Vice Chair for Georgia PSD, and they have a meeting this afternoon. Um, so if it's okay, I would like to speak on his behalf for just a couple of minutes. Um, just to kind of tell you a little bit about Liberty County, we are home to Fort Stewart, which is the largest military base east of the Mississippi. Um, very proud of our military community. Um, it does bring special challenges. Um, it's a very transient community. We also have a very high poverty rate, uh, but we don't see that as a negative. We, we embrace that and, and feel like that's, that makes us who we are. Um, so we definitely celebrate all of that. We are also what's called an EFMP base, which is an exceptional family members program um, for students. It's, it's our military um, families who have special needs students. We are EFP, EFMP because we are able to serve all disabilities. We have those services and programs here to support that. Um, we are a one-to-one -one iPad district. Uh, we're very fortunate to have that. We've been um, named an Apple Distinguished Program. Um, but the, the charter system, um, you know, I personally have been in this district for 25 years, and becoming a charter system was one of the best things I think we've ever done. Um, it's given us the flexibility because our population is so different than anyone else. Um, we, we, again, have students from all over the world who are in and out all the time. They all have their own individual needs. 
um, and becoming a charter system has really helped us to focus um, our, our mission and our vision state that, you know, we really are looking at all students, making sure that all students are succeeding, that all students are being provided um, those exceptional opportunities. But really, we're looking at each student and each student individually. Um, we are very much into the innovative um, thinking. Our schools have embraced innovation. Um, we have an, a wonderful college and career academy um, that has, you know, helped us to implement our fine and performing arts courses on top of the traditional um, college and career academy courses that they had. We also recently um, implemented a firefighting pathway because it was a need in our community. Um, we have great um, college uh, partners, our higher ed partners, um, so we're very fortunate to have um, these things with us. We do value our digital content. Like I said, we are a one-to-one -one iPad district. So I will tell you that the flexibility that we have been able to use, especially during the pandemic, um, we really didn't miss, miss a beat. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that it was an easy accomplishment, but um, our, our students and our staff, I mean, we were ready to go because we had had such a focus on the digital content and the technology. Um, we do uh, value our technology. We know that our students use that technology in their daily lives, so we wanted to make sure that we were using it in their education. So when it was time to shut down last March, um, everybody had their iPad and their, we had Canvas and, and Google Meets, and they, were, they just kept going. So we're very proud of them. Um, we have had great accomplishments with our graduation rate. We're now at 93.7. Um, our CCRPI scores continue to go up. Um, and our students are really taking advantage of a lot of the programs and things that we offer. We do have one state certified STEM school, our STEM program, um, but we have other schools who are also in the process of becoming STEM certified. So um, we're very proud of the work that has been done to meet the needs of our very, very different population. There's several people here with us today. Like I said, Dr. Perry was here with us earlier that had to leave for a Georgia PSC meeting. Um, we do have our board chair, Ms. Lily Baker. Um, we have our executive director of finance, Ms. Stephanie Clark. We have CEO of our Career Academy, which is Ms. Carissa Young. We have um, one of our principals, Mr. Chris Anderson. And then we also have a very valued member um, of our community, our SGT, and our parent and a parent in our district, and that's Mr. Terry Cook. Um, so we are very proud of what we've done with the charter system. We know it's the right thing for our district, and it has allowed us to really provide what our students need because we do believe that our students are very different um, than, than most districts. So with that being said, um, Ms. Baker, if you'd like to add anything, please do, um, but we won't take up much more of your time. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, Susan. I was, really wasn't looking forward to speaking, but, um, but uh, having the charter has been tremendous for our kids. I remember when I first joined the board and we had parents stationed in Afghanistan and they were calling because their children were missing opportunities. And because of the charter, we have been truly, truly, truly blessed to offer all of these different opportunities, fine arts, STEM, STEAM, all of those. So um, my hat goes off to Dr. Perry and, and Ms. Avan and staff for what they're doing and to you all because you have a wonderful board that I, that I know. I remember when we first um, went up to talk about this, you worked with us greatly to get it accomplished. So I, my hat's off to you all and thank you all. Thank you. Any questions from committee members for members of the Liberty County team? Mr. Mason. Uh, did I hear correctly from Dr. Taylor that you are thinking about uh, uh, developing a transitional literacy class? So can you tell us a little more about that? Yes, we actually, we do have a reading transition program um, and we're, we're, we have, we have already begun the reading transition program. We're continuing to improve that. Um, and that was for our students who were entering high school. Um, unfortunately, not reading on grade level. Um, we recognize the, com the text complexity for a high school textbook um, is, is, is very high. And some of our students were not ready for that content. So when they enter the ninth grade, we are on block scheduling. Um, so that first semester of the ninth grade, they take a reading transition course where we use some very prescribed intervention type 
um, resources and instructional methods with those students um, to help them get ready so that in second semester they can take that first English course um, and, and be more successful not only in that course but also reading um, at the Lexile level that's required in those other high school courses, you know, science, math, social studies, you know, whichever course it is. Um, so that has been a tremendous help for our students. Um, so far, like I said, we're not we're not completely there yet. We still have some things that we need to to fine tune and keep going with. But it has made a tremendous difference because we do recognize the tech complexity in high school, and um, it's helping our ninth graders to be more successful because that's where we were seeing the most students who were not successful in a grade level. Um, and so that's that's one of the reasons that we we wanted to do that reading transition program. Thank you for sharing. Any other questions? Any, uh, uh, is there a question from Mr. Donaldson? No. Uh, any opposition to moving this to the consent agenda? Hearing none, it's so moved. Uh, item nine. Item nine, do the Peach County Schools Board of Education approve their charter system renewal petition on April 6, 2021? In their last charter term, Peach County utilized their flexibility and funding to implement universal screenings in reading and math and develop learner profiles to address and support the educational needs, skills, and interests of each student within the instructional program. If approved, Peach County Schools will utilize the flexibility granted within their system charter to implement a comprehensive induction and mentoring program for faculty and staff, expand district connections and CTAE offerings in middle and high school, implement evidence-based literacy strategies and interventions, and provide trainings and support for MTSS. And they were recommended for approval by the Charter Advisory Committee on April 9, 2021, for a five-year term. I believe we have Superintendent Stewart on the line for Peach. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Sylvia Rose Brown, and I am actually uh, speaking on behalf of Dr. Lionel Brown, our superintendent. Present with me today, I have Dr. Wanda Stewart, our assistant superintendent, Mrs. Malabrina Marshall, she's our Title I person. And we just want to start off by saying this effort has definitely been a collaborative process with our parents, our community, our students, our staff, even our board members, basically all of our stakeholders coming together uh, to, to better our students and get them college and career ready. And I just want to uh, spotlight a couple of things that we are doing here in, in, in Peach County. Um, first, we, we recognize the need to target and work with our youngest readers. We recognize there were some learning gaps with our students. Uh, for example, one of the programs we really focused on this year was the use of a phonics, a digital phonics program called CAPIT, um, in which our students were able to, whether they were in person or virtual, they were able to receive instruction from our teachers utilizing this program. And we actually saw 92% of our students to make significant progress with their reading skills. So that was one of the innovations. In addition to, with our um, focus on student engagement, we focused on using uh, the research of uh, John Hattie with the focus on teacher clarity. We wanted our students to know what they were learning, why they were learning this, and how would they know. So we were able to capture that with our students so that our students are not only um, doing, you know, they're going not only uh, at the bar but above the bar because they're actually engaged in their learning. In addition, we also ha uh, got to utilize a, a curriculum that was purchased by the district called the Into Reading Program that had leveled books for our students. Uh, based upon, as we stated or was stated earlier about those universal screenings where they are in reading and math, we were able to utilize that. And our teachers have classroom libraries that they're able to use with their students. Uh, we also were able to recruit college and career, excuse me, community and college partners with uh, our local college, which is Fort Valley State University. So we were able to come together with them to find incentives provide professional development, and provide a positive district culture with them. So that was our partnership with them. In addition, in the upcoming year, 
kind of jumping ahead a little bit, they're going to also work with us uh, for as far as tutoring our students. Um, some other things that we're doing, in addition, we're trying to build the capacity of our staff. Peach County has gone above and beyond trying to push our teachers to constantly go back and be lifelong learners. Our county actually pays for our teachers to go and get endorsements, and we've had teachers, really almost whole schools, getting reading endorsements. We've got teachers getting gifted endorsements, ESOL endorsements, science endorsements, and MTSS endorsements. So our teachers are actually able to take that knowledge and go back into the classroom, and they're able to work with the students in meeting their needs. And to kind of tie in with that MTSS uh, part of it, we are actually in the process now of providing training to our teachers on MTSS multi-tiered support systems in order to meet all of our students' needs. In addition, our county decided that we definitely needed to get support for our teachers, so we are hiring coordinators to come in and work with the teachers to make sure that our students that need that additional support are not only getting that support, but we are documenting the practices that they're doing and we're identifying what works and things that aren't. We're tweaking those plans in order for our students to be not only at grade level, but above grade level. And then lastly, I wanted to point out to you about our connections and CTAE offerings. Uh, some of the things that we're looking at for the upcoming year, we are been providing STEM and enrichment, uh, fine arts, focusing on audiovisual, drama, robotics, and even business education courses. And these things, would, for example, with STEM are starting not only in the upper grades, but we're actually going as low with our lower grades to offer these things to our students. And all of these things, thanks to the flexibility of allowing us to participate in this charter school system, has allowed us not only to meet but exceed our high school graduation rate. Our graduation rate, guys, right now is at 87.6%, which is well above our state average, which is 83.8%. We thank you so very much for your time, and we will open it up if you have any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, thank you very much for your presentation this afternoon. Uh, if there are no objections, we'll move this to the consent agenda for tomorrow. Item 10. Item 10, Charter System Renewal for Terrell County Schools. The Terrell County Schools Board of Education approved their Charter System Renewal Petition on August 10, 2020. In their last charter term, Terrell County utilized their flexibility to implement flexible service models to serve students, partner with community businesses to offer pathway options, expand CTAE pathway options through the Southwest Georgia College and Career Academy, and develop community service opportunities within academic course offerings. If approved, Terrell County Schools will utilize the flexibility granted within their system charter to continue their current program and provide additional supports for professional development and instructional planning. They were approved for recommendation by the Charter Advisory Committee on April 9th, 2021. I believe we have Dr. Bell online to speak for Terrell County Schools. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to share some of our successes in our Terrell County Charter School System. Uh, we've had um, a very, very positive outcome by becoming a charter school system. And um, let me first start by just introducing the persons that I have uh, with me today. I have uh, Ms. Bernice Burke, who's our curriculum director. Uh, Ms. Tasha Peters, who's the principal of um, Cooper Culver Elementary School. Ms. Olympia Gardner, principal at Terrell Middle School. Dr. Vivian Laster, the principal at Terra High School, Ms. Tanya Perkins, our Title I director, uh, Ms. Mona Lisa Thomas, who's the instructional coach at Terra Middle School, and uh, Dr. Dee Price, who's also the instructional coach at the high school. I'd like to say to you that when we first started uh, entering into this here adventure, we started with the idea that we needed to improve our academic standing overall. We needed to expand our course offerings because we are a small school and the students were actually asking for additional courses that they had interest in. So we were very fortunate in order to become a member of the 4C Academy as well. That's the um, 
Kanye Conyers College and Career Academy in Doherty County. And we transport our students to that facility, you know, each day. And we also were looking at more community involvement uh, as well. And I think that through the process of being a charter system, having a governance team, that was more inclusion of our community, uh, certainly giving the community more of a voice. And so we feel very positive about that. There are a lot of things I can say about being a charter system. And, you know, the things that just really pop in my mind is the flexibility, the uh, chances for to be innovative, uh, certainly the blanket waivers. All of those things go hand in hand with giving us an opportunity in order to uh, further, you know, our students' uh, success rate. Our grad rate has been above the state average uh, for the last five years. Um, we are able to do unique things with our staff um, uh, by being a charter school system as well. Uh, we were able to get our businesses as well as community members to buy into it. When we have a need, we are able to get persons from our agricultural lab. We are basically an agricultural community, so that goes a long ways with STEM as well. Uh, Robotics is a very, very high uh, within our uh, school system. We are doing things such as apprenticeships with our local newspaper as well as some of our other businesses uh, where kids are actually learning a trade and they are getting some credit uh, towards graduation uh, for doing so. Um, I think that for the most part, we have also partner with uh, all being primary health care and we now also have a school based health center uh, within our elementary school. I think that uh, this process has also allowed us to certainly move in a way that we would not have been able to do uh, otherwise. When I look back at the very beginning, we started out with our elementary school being a, a turnaround school. And because of the innovative kinds of things our principal was able to do, we were able to turn that school around in a short period of time, within two years really, and to come off of the list and become a promise school. So we just feel like we've had a lot of success, you know, within our school system, and we thank you for the opportunity to share this with you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Any opposition to moving it to the consent agenda? Thank you for being with us today. Dr. Taylor, we have two more items. Number 11. Item 11, strategic waivers, school systems, contract amendments. Three strategic waiver school systems, Baker County, Forsyth County, and Lanier County, are seeking to amend their Swissy contracts. Two of these systems, Baker and Lanier, are seeking additional flexibility within their contracts to support their ability to address operational needs and support student achievement and growth. Baker is seeking to um, uh, additional flexibility and waivers for the uh, Fair Dismissal Act, and Lanier is seeking a waiver from the school councils. One system, Forsyth County, is seeking an amendment to add two new schools that they've added in their district to their strategic waiver systems contract. The amendments requested by each system are located in the attachments, and the petitions have been approved by each system's local board of education. Any questions for Dr. Taylor? Any objection to moving it to the consent agenda? Hearing none. Item 12. Item 12 is the State Charter Schools Commission appointment. So the State Charter Schools Commission has a commission vacancy with the expired term of Commissioner Tom Lewis. Commission members are appointed by the State Board of Education in accordance with the Official Code of Georgia Annotated, Section 20-2-2082B, from nominations received from the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and Speaker of the House of Representatives. In accordance with law, Lieutenant Governor Duncan submitted two nominations to replace Mr. Lewis. The appointed commissioner will serve a four-year term from the date of appointment through January 16, 2025. The city has recommended that the State Board of Education approve the appointment of Mr. Mike Dudgeon to the State Charter Schools Commission. Yep. Any questions for Dr. Taylor? Hearing none, any opposition to moving it to the consent agenda? 
Hearing none, it is so ordered, and uh, that means that items 1 through 12 will be added to the consent agenda. Uh, any other comments or questions? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. All right, thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Matt. And then, uh, and then uh, that uh, the board the board is now in recess until we convene tomorrow morning. Nine o'clock. Thank God. Thank you. <laughs> Eleven would be good. <laughs> Not tomorrow.